That's your boy Gooch. That is the homie keys. This is the mod father. And this is the rogue head huddle with Gooch and Keys presented by RGR. Gooch, pay the bills. I don't even have to pay the bills. If you go ahead and hit that little bar down there, all our bills are right there. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. We got the live stream on Mondays with Ryan and Dan, Q&A. We've got Chief in the North on Thursday. We've got daily videos and breakdowns during the week. You've got, of course, the huddle. Ryan likes to chime in. Um, Go visit the store. Um, Pick you up the analytics guide. I believe Ryan has a code for that. Obviously, the mod father is here. He's got the mod father picks and meetups once a month. Check that out. Join the Discord. I'm going to quit talking because y'all going to take this walk with us. All right. So in last week's episode or last time's episode, however far apart these air, we uh, started tackling the Chiefs way, 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 way too early 53-man roster. And we touched on the offense and special teams. And we're we so far we're only hitting on on the players that we think at each position are basically locks, like as certain as possible, like n- with with as little question as possible of making this roster. So in this episode, we're going to tackle the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, I, I think this one for the most part may be easier than the offensive side. Just because we have, well, we have more players that might be a lot easier to lock in. Like uh, Chris Jones, um, as much as I hate to say it, Frank Clark, given what they did with his contract, it makes it fairly certain that he'll be on this roster pending uh, not being suspended for any legal issues, but haven't even heard any any, uh, smoke there, so... (laughs) <laughs> no, not whatsoever. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Keys is here all week. <laughs> so, Chris, Frank, uh, Carl Loftus, obviously, first round pick. It's going to be really hard to not make the team. Um, Along with I would think, Duffy. I would think Naughty and Wharton, um, Kando, and uh, Dana. I feel fairly comfortable that all the, all seven of those guys are going to make make this roster on the defensive line. Is there? And right now we don't know we don't know if Ingram will get signed back or not. Um, you know the Chiefs don't have exclusive rights on him. That's not what they did. But uh, you know if he's hasn't signed with another team by July twenty second, then. He can only sign with the Chiefs, so. I like uh, our chances. 4.4 mil. Yeah, w- you know, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but uh, right now, he's he, he doesn't have a contract, so we can't even. Well, I mean, it's our show. I guess we could make the rules, but uh, it's up to you guys whether we include them. I think we have seven defensive linemen, if you guys agree with all of those. Uh, no, I think I think no, Dana's I'm cut. Not positive. I think Dana's think, cut and Saunders is on the team. So you think Saunders is going to be on the team and oh, Mike yeah. Dana's going to get cut? Mm-hmm. And what did you say, Aaron? I like Saunders. Kando, I'm not so sure. He's a, a lock. And I, that's I would normally agree, except they're gonna give him a year. Like this will be probably a year for him. That's what I yeah. think. So I it. my argument would be, you know, he was what a fourth round pick. So it's not that he was a super early pick, but they took him. They didn't risk putting him on the practice squad. They put they kept him on the team all year, um, and. Whatever we want to say about Daly, and you can we can question him as a as a defensive line coach. Uh, whatever whatever we want to say, they brought in Colin, who, from everything I've heard, is supposed to be, 
and, and you know, take it forever, whatever you want with Daly, but Cullen's supposed to be a top line, top of the line defensive line coach. Um, I don't think they, I don't think they keep Kando on the roster all of last year just to cut him this year. I'd be really surprised by that. Um, but, you know, I won't fight you guys on Kando or, or Dana, but there's no way I'm giving you the thumbs up on Saunders as much as I personally like him. He was injured last year, and I don't even know that he saw a snap for the team. It seems so, like he's been injured quite a bit. So I think he, I think he's fighting for a spot at the end of the 53 roster. And again, that's not, I love, I love Saunders. That is just, you know, kind of looking at the situation. So I wouldn't call Saunders by any means a lock. Doesn't Uh, sound like you love him. You got to go all Cornell Powell love. You know what I'm saying? I've got five locks. (laughs) Being Clark, Jones, Naughty, Karloftis, and Ingram. Okay. Well, we got to decide let, if we're going to let a guy who's not even. I, I let him come off because he hasn't because he hasn't signed. I've got Gatman, Jones, Galifianakis, um, Saunders, and um, um, crap, Warden, Warden, Ward, Warden, Ward, Warden. Warden. Yeah, <laughs> I would like to. I would like to make him a lock. Who's that? Wharton. Yeah, it sounds Over like Saunders. The, it sounds like the only consensus we have right now is four. Is Frank, Chris, Naughty, and Karloftis, and Wharton. So that would be five. Mm-hmm. Those are the only ones that all all three of us agree on. Mm-hmm. So you're good with okay. Wharton. Yeah, he was he was on my original list. Yep. I'm good I, with I that. personally would still put Kando and and Dana on there. But uh yeah. And I, I hope Ingram is back, but since he doesn't have a contract again, it's our rules and it is way, 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 way too early, fifty three man roster. So He's basically got a contract. He just hasn't signed it. Right. Right. Yeah. I, it's kinda yeah, it's kinda iffy. Right. It's kind of like a non-exclusive franchise tag, right? If any other team wants to make them an offer, they can do it. I think we get like a third round. But no, I just I'm just saying like, you know, if they do though. For the purpose of us making a list, but yeah. Um so I'll leave that up to Gooch whether we in- include Ingram or not. But uh if we don't, that we have 5 on the defensive line, right? that we all agree on. If, if yes. each wants to allow us to include Ingram, I think that would give us six because uh, if nobody else has signed him by July 22nd, he's coming to Kansas City, and I think he's making the roster as a certainty. That is two and a half months. Yeah, roughly. So what do you so, think, Gooch? Yes or no on Ingram, Gooch? Lock he's got a contingent. Not. He's got a contingent contract, so I mean, it is there. True, but if someone else signs him, then it, I just add him. All right. Well, if we add him, that gives us six. Um, we we may have just made sure that someone does sign him. He he <laughs> likes Kansas City. He's just not going to sign until after training camp because he doesn't want to have to go. Once you sign the contract, you have to go to training camp or get fined. He's going to wait. <clears throat> He's 33 years old. He doesn't want to do two a days or be out in the Kansas City sun, sweating, running at full speed. How much does he need it anyway, being on the team half the year last year? Right. I, 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 think, that, I think that Beach understood that, and I think that had a lot to do with, with this. Like, it was the kind of the perfect, you know, kind of the, the perfect thing for the situation was, you know, Veach understood, 
he even said early in the off season he didn't think Ingram wanted to sign anywhere until after training camp. Well, now if he did, if he waits that long, he can only re-sign with Kansas City, you know. So, which is it's kind of a win-win for us because if he doesn't sign elsewhere, then we don't have to worry about playing some kind of waiting game, you know, of will he pick us or another team. It's Kansas City or nothing at that point. July 22nd, it's Kansas City or you don't play because we have the rights over him as of of that day. So that gives us six on the defensive line. Uh, Bolton, Gay, and uh, Dirty, Death Row, Chanel, I would say are the three linebacker locks on this team. You can maybe... Convince me of a fourth lock just because of special teams, though. Dorian O'Daniel. He, he's not yes. on the contract, though. I'm going to toot that horn. No. He isn't? No. So the linebackers we have under contract are Bolton, uh, Shalik Calhoun, Jermaine Carter, uh, Chanel, Jack Cochran, uh, Willie Gay, Darius Harris, Elijah Lee, and Mike Rose. No, I'm stuck with the four. So I would stick with those three, and I could see one or two of uh, Jermaine Carter, um, Darius Harris, Elijah Lee, Mike Rose, who I believe was the undrafted free agent from Iowa State, who I believe is is like a coverage-only linebacker, which may be something that helps him make make the team. If he can if he can cover as a linebacker and do it well, and he can play special teams, I think there's a spot for him as our as our fourth or fifth linebacker. But I wouldn't call any of these guys a lock. Just just those three are the only ones that I have as a lock: Bolton Gay and and uh, Dirty Death Row Chanel. DDR. EDRC. I'm right there with you, Keys. So that puts us at what? Nine? Okay. Wait, I thought we had, did we have six on defensive line or seven? We did. Six. Six. Because I saved okay. out of King to. Okay. So that puts us a nine on, on defense. So what do you want to tackle next? Cornerback or safety? Might as well just call it defensive backs. Well, I think it's – I think it helps me visually if, if we separate them. And then if you want to have your DBs – Kind of in the gray area in between, I'm fine with that. But like, uh, well, let's do well. Let's just do safeties. I like safeties. I got one as a lock. Brian Cooks is a lock. Justin Reed is a lock. That's it. That's what I got. Yeah, that's those are those are the three that that I would throw out there as locks. Let me look really quick just to make sure. Uh, we didn't miss any anybody that uh, somehow got past us. I think that's. I think those are the only three, the exact three I would have said. Um, there's there's more players we signed. Um, Dion Bush, uh, who played with the with the Bears. I don't think he's a lock. But he's definitely a hilarious follow on, um, on Twitter. On the Twitter. I've got him right. on my 53. But I don't know if he's a lock, yeah. Uh-oh. And I do like him. I don't know anything about his social media, but... I believe he's I like the guy who... Player. I believe he's the guy who signed the day the Chiefs traded Tyreek, and so he jumps on on Twitter to to greet Chiefs Kingdom, and then realizes what just happened, and he's like, 
he was basically like, oh, my bad. I'll be back later or something like that. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't. When we get to the end of the 53-man roster and we start having those more nuanced discussions, you know, you could convince me, but I would, I, you're not going to convince me he's a lock right now as part of the safety room. I'm good with that. So three safeties, that leaves us, that puts us at 12 on defense. Yep. So uh, no, cornerbacks, corner. Sneed, right? McDuffie, first round pick, you traded up for him. He's, unless he goes out, I'm not even going to say that because uh, unless he go, unless he pulls a Raiders player, some kind of Raiders player type of move. I mean, he's he's on the team. He's a lock. So, um, man, it, it kind of gets a little iffy from there. I don't know that I can say any of the rest of those guys are for sure locks. I mean. I would think Williams is. He was the earliest corner after McDuffie drafted. Fourth round? I don't remember if it was third or fourth. I think it was fourth. Yeah, I think it was fourth, but and, and he's listed. I could argue he's Lonnie three. Johnson. What's that? I said I said uh, Williams is listed as DB, so you know we're not even hundred percent sure position right now. Um, the cor- the corner the specifically. Designated cornerbacks are Baker, Fenton, uh, Lonnie Johnson, McDuffie, Snead, Jalen Watson, and that's it. So that's six guys that have nothing but a cornerback designation. And we've we've named two uh, for sure. Um, Gooch has the only locks I can say for sure. If those would be the only two, I would. I would think William. Fenton would be number three if there was a third for sure lock. Fenton's he's not been a make starter. It. He's been a starter. Fenton's and, not gonna uh, make it. He's played at a fairly high level, but Fenton's not gonna make it. But Goose says Fenton isn't gonna make it, and I didn't. I didn't list I'm him. I'm afraid he isn't three, either. But uh, uh, here's my justification for for not saying that Lonnie Johnson is a lock. We traded a 2024 conditional seventh seventh, rounder. Yeah. A 2024 conditional seventh rounder. I mean, that's about as, that might, that's as low as you can go without signing an undrafted free agent. Right. And some, uh, it's not, it's not about what you gave up. It's about who you fleeced. And keep in mind, we aren't talking about the Texans. But Bill O'Brien isn't there anymore. Doesn't matter. They are screwed up still. (laughs) Okay, but, I mean, you would. They have Lonnie Johnson playing safety, which is something he never did in college, and he didn't do his first year in the NFL. Then they moved him to safety where he sucked. If you put him back where he belongs, not to mention this is why I think Fenton is not a lock. Because outside of McDuffie, Sneed is 6'1 and son. And every other corner is 6'2 and son. And they want those long, lanky speed guys. We had this conversation, Keys, I think before you and Aaron went live on BAK Discussions, check us out on YouTube, um, about how McDuffie couldn't even guard, you know, he can't guard Juju. You know what I'm saying? How's he going to guard Keenan Allen or any of the other tall receivers? Like, he's, he can't. Keenan Allen doesn't have anything for him. <laughs> and let's be honest, Ward wasn't the only one getting abused by Jamar Chase's 40-inch vertical leap when the Bengals played the Chiefs. No, he wasn't. So I, I'm just 
I really think if you're not McDuffie or Sneed, you're not there. I mean, I mean, they're gonna, you're, they're gonna take these long corners that they traded for and drafted, and they're gonna trial by fire. Even Veach acknowledged a slight step back. He knows we're not technically rebuilding; we're retooling, and so they'll be okay with playoffs this year and getting those guys a whole lot of field time, and then next year bringing the thunder. But two are locks at corner. Yeah, I guess. Sneed and McDuffie. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess with with Johnson, one I would counter. I would counter that with, you know, none of the other thirty teams in the NFL. I would think didn't offer anything better, or the Texans wouldn't have taken a 2024 seventh round pick from us. Um, and yeah, but a lot can, of people don't have. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say I'll, I'll concede the the part about them playing him at safety, and you know the Texans were a terrible team. Although he did finish last year, I think he played the second half of the season. They did move him back to cornerback for that, and you know take it for a grain of salt. Um, you know his PFF grades were terrible there, but I don't think he would be asked to do. You know what Spags would have him do would be totally different. Um, and, you know, someone could say, well, look, you know, how good Spags made Ward look. He can do that with Lonnie Johnson, you know, and there was there was talk certainly coming out. One, Matt House, you know, until this year was the linebackers coach. And, you know, Matt House was from Kentucky uh, when Lonnie Johnson was at Kentucky where he played college ball. And then, you know, I believe Re- or Veach had had mentioned that, um, you know, there was some consultation with, with Justin Reed, his Texans teammate last year, you know, that helped them have the input to where, in addition to that, though, Beach did mention they did try to trade for him or had trade discussions with him last year at the trade deadline. So, you know, he's someone they liked in the past. Um, I'm not, I'm not hating on him. I just, I wouldn't be able to call him a lock. And the first part of that was, you know, they didn't give up much for him. And you could argue, well, you know, if Veach was able to get him for a conditional 2024 seventh round pick, why would he try to, you know, you get what you can and you hope you get a diamond in the rough. We got Charvarius Ward for Parker Erringer. And so, I mean, you know, it is what it is, but. Um, yeah, I would, if you pressed me to pick a third lock, I would be between Lonnie Johnson and Fenton, no doubt. Um, you know, I don't think, think they would envision Fenton to be on the outside. You know, as you said, they definitely got a lot of length outside of McDuffie in the cornerback room. And that's simply because the tape doesn't lie. You know, it's like Shakira says, the hips don't lie. Well, the tape didn't lie. And so, um, yeah, I, but, you know, McDuffie said they've had him. You're muted, Gooch. A Shakira reference on the huddle, boys and girls. You don't get that every day. That that helped. That helped me in college well, soccer. Agree. But, uh, you know, even McDuffie said they have him learning nickel as well. You know, I could see I could see a situation where and I don't want to give Spags too much credit for being a genius based on past decisions, you know, he made and didn't make. But, but if I was to look at him as optimistically as possible, I could see where maybe they would envision having Johnson and another tall corner on the outside and having McDuffie and Sneed or McDuffie and Fenton in the slot and, you know, moving Sneed around kind of everywhere, kind of that original Tyron position where, you know, you're playing, you can play outside some, you can play in the slot some, you know, you can play box. I mean, just like all over the place, but, uh, you know, we already agreed there's two locks at corner, right? 
So we're at fourteen. Good, good. You're for, muted again. I think. I think I, I like and that. And I really, and I really think it could be three because you traded for Lonnie Johnson. You were like the PFF grade. But the one thing the Chiefs have that a lot of people don't have is game film on when he tried to guard the best tight end in the NFL. That's just not fair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yes, he looked bad against Travis. Who doesn't? But but he right. held his own he held his own more than the rest of those guys. So if you can keep up with Travis, even a little bit of Travis. Why not put him on the field and stick him with Darren Waller? Or some of these other all-world tight ends that are coming into the league now. There is no way there is no way I would do that. The difference between listen, Travis needs some help with Waller, but Travis does not have the speed of Waller. He is a very veteran savvy route runner and he understands angles and positions. Waller okay, so you don't stick speed. you don't stick him on you don't stick him on Waller when we play Oakland, but you've got Snead who runs four three, and other six two corners that run four four. I mean, you know, there is no rugs, so you stick Snead on Waller, McDuffie on <laughs> McDuffie on Devontae. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking well, McDuffie would be on. Uh, the you're gonna guy. need, you're gonna need someone who is a step right for McDuffie. <laughs> I would, I would almost say Renfro because that's, Renfro, that's that's Renfro is an outstanding about. route runner, and you're gonna want someone who can stay with someone who is an outstanding. Well, I mean. Sneed you know, on Devontae, Devontae is too, though. So, Sneed you know what this just there. you know what this just told me? We don't have no corners. <laughs> Sneed on Devontae. Sneed on Devontae. McDuffie on Renfro. Renfro. And then you use Brian Johnson. Brian, Brian and Cooks. Cook. Johnson and Cook on Waller. On Waller. And I think you've got them locked up. This might because be whether it still is David Carr. <laughs> exactly. Derek. Yeah. Derek. Carr brothers are all the same. <laughs> but this isn't the this is the lock show, right? Yeah, this is the lock show. So McDuffie right, so We've got locks. fourteen for defense. 21 for offense, that puts us at 35. Box. Now, now we didn't get to any of the, D, the DB the DB designated guys. So yeah, that would be Williams. That would be uh, Barro or Barco, Barku, Luke Barku, DeCaprio Boodle, uh, Nasir Greer, uh, Nazea Johnson. It was not a lot. That was one of our draft picks, right? That was the last draft pick. Devin Key and Joshua Williams. So I say Josh Williams for the only lock there. Yeah, I, I don't see any of any of the other draft picks at defensive back as locks because Veach made it clear that at least to some extent, that he was just throwing numbers, right, kind of volume at the position because he knew that he wasn't going to be able to get undrafted free agents to come in since he drafted McDuffie and they would look at the roster already. So I, I, I can't call them locks at this point. When we get to the back end of the roster and then we have those Fourth arguments. Rounder, though. Yeah, even then. I wouldn't – he probably has a leg up on other guys, but, you know. I can I see a think, sixth or seventh round guy being. I don't think that – how many players are we at now on defense? You said 16? 14. 14 on defense? So that puts us at what, 35 total locks on the roster? 
And I say Williams is a lock for DB. So that would make 1536. So if we have 35 guys, that leaves us with 18 players, right? And if you go back and you look at the positions now, we'll see how many guys, like how many guys are basically going to be left. Was that so, 21 including special teams? Yeah, it was including okay. special teams. Yes, yes, it was. But if we're at 35, right, you said 35. So that's 18 players. Um, we had four locks at wide receiver. Beach has said five or six. That you're going to have five or six receivers, period. Six. So if you go with six – you know that now you're down to 16 players. We had two, we had two running backs, and one of those was Burton. I think we're all in agreement that they're at least going to have two other running backs on the team. It's not going to be Clyde and Burton. It's going to be Clyde and five. At least Clyde and two other guys, if not Clyde and three other guys, and Burton. Right. So if if you say just two, you know. That takes us down to what? 14 players left. Um, and we only had two tight ends that were locks. And I think we probably all feel that they're at least going to have three. So that takes you down to 13 players. We had seven offensive linemen, I believe. There will probably be nine or 10. I would say at least nine. So if we say at least nine, now we're down to what? 11. 11 roster spots left. Um, and then you're going back to the defense. Right? We hit all the offense there, and you have 11 spots left. We had five guys on the on the defensive line that were locks. I would think there's at least going to be two more, right? If not three more. I think we had six locks on the Defensive Six. Line. Yeah, I think last year we had eight or nine, maybe ten on the defensive line. So if even if we said eight, that takes us down to what nine spots left. Um, probably one or two linebackers at least. We had three is locks there, and what normally five. Yeah, I think we had about five last year. So if we add two there, that takes us down to seven. Um, then three locks on safeties. I would think technically it, five there. Yeah, yeah, I would say Six. at least one more. Um, if we had one more, that would take us down to uh, six. And then we only had two corners as locks. And there's probably going to be at least six or seven. So yeah, the numbers the numbers would be kind of right there. Um, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of math and trying to do it um, <laughs> on the off the top of my head here. But uh, yeah, then you start getting then you start getting back to. What? Uh, Kendo, Dana, Saunders? Yeah. I mean, theoretically, we could keep all three of them and we'd be at nine on the defensive line, right? And that's with Ingram. Uh, sounds about right. Um, to me. But I'm trying to think who it was. There was some... Oh, Malik Herring, I think, is is someone... I've got him as a linebacker, but I think pass rusher is also a possibility. Yeah, I think um, I can't remember if it was uh, Matt Derrick or someone else was was talking about him uh, as defensive end and what he was what he'd done so far in in the rookie camp. So um, he was Taylor rookie camp. 
Yeah, I think so because uh, he hasn't he hasn't played he hasn't actually played. Okay, so he's technically so, still yeah. a rookie. So like Cornell Powell got to go too, and and some of those guys. Um, I think uh, Taylor Stallworth is his name. Been hearing a lot of. Uh, I've um, got him making my fifty three. So that would, if he made it, but if he made it, I don't know. What, what, what do you guys think? Would we carry four defensive tackles? No way. You don't think so? No. I, I think it kind of depends on, you know. Karloftis can move in there too, though. Right. So, you could get rid of a couple, keeping that in mind. And Ingram could, too. All right. But I've got making my 53, if you want to get into that, or if we're just doing the block show. Just the lock show. Just the lock show, Aaron. Don't get ahead of us. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah. I'll stop that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. I guess uh, so we had what? We had 18 locks on offense and 14 locks on defense. If you won't go with Williams with me, then yes. Yeah, I won't <laughs> go there. And that, and it's not to say I don't think he'll make the roster. It's just there's like, you know, it's almost like beach with the draft. And there's groups of guys where, you know, there are certainties. And then there's guys that I see, you know, right now they haven't distinguished themselves to where, you know, they're necessarily better than the block that they're in in my opinion, to where I could say, you know, this person's definitely a block or, you know, definitely a lock, not a block. And so that's kind of where I'm at with him is I have him in that block of, of, of other players that we drafted, you know, after McDuffie at, at the position and the UDFAs that we have and some of the players we're bringing back where, you know, right now we're recording this in May. So, you know, I don't have anything to call him a lock yet. Way super early. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we're we're gonna get to that. We'll get to that probably in our next episode where we give the whole fifty three what we think, and so I'll be forced to do that. But for this point, we're just we're just trying to get the basic foundation so we can see what we all have to play with. Is you know we've just given everybody out there watching. Um, what, 35 guys that we feel for sure are going to make this team. And so, you know, that leaves us with an argument over 18 guys. And, you know, again, there there's, going to be, there's going to be vets. There's going to be vets who get cut by other teams and we're going to pick them up. I would be surprised if there weren't one or two or three vets who, you know, we're going to get cut and we didn't pick them up or they were going to get cut and we made a trade. And so. First round picks, he likes to do that with. So when we, when we, when we get to those last 18 guys, it'll probably be a brawl. Gooch, do you have any last words here for us before, before we leave? I can't wait to prove all y'all wrong. <laughs> With that being said, we appreciate all of you who watch this content, whether religiously or passing. Make sure you join the Discord where the Mod Father himself, me and Keys, are there. Go into the RGR store, pick you up a sweatshirt, join the All Juice team um, that benefits Therese Paylor's scholarship. Is that right? Am I right about that? Yeah. Um, check out the live stream on Monday. Chief in the North with Seth Kaiser on Thursday. Um, check out Chris Clark's Chiefs Corner Substack. Ryan and Dan have a Substack. Um, Seth has his Substack, Chief in the North newsletter. Uh, 
become a member of the RGI channel uh, and does meetups with members. Me and Keys are usually there. Um, yeah. Um, make sure you tell somebody you love them. We'll catch you in the next one. I can't say peace out anymore, guys. I'm sorry. I got to come up with something else. But uh, we want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for RGR and EAK discussions. Um, and, uh, and find us on the Twitter. The, the, the Twitter. Twitter. The Facebook. <laughs> I don't have Aaron's on here. The Sorry, Instagram. I don't have I don't have Aaron's the Twitter on here. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.